Hey everyone, what's happening? What is going on? Right now you are listening to the Victory Loves Company podcasts. This is the Connie's Convos edition for Thursday, May 31st, 2018. I'm just going to give you guys a quickie today. You guys like quickies? Everybody likes quickies. Uh, First and foremost, I hope everybody had a good, safe, happy, and relaxing Memorial Day uh, weekend. And they're looking forward to a very short work week this week and even a more relaxing upcoming uh, weekend as we kick off the unofficial start of summer. It's been hot and cold over here in New Jersey. So depending on where you are, I hope that you find your sanctuary and your peace of mind. Also, I'd like to thank everybody that supported uh, Gina's uh, book, The Letters in the Old House, that's available on um, Amazon. Um, It's been up for almost four weeks now, and she's actually doing very, very well with it. Considering it's self-published, she's doing very well with it. She has a tremendous support system in place. Everybody at work has been really great, Uh, friends and relatives and everybody that has read it has enjoyed it. It's a very easy read. It's about uh, 200 pages long, but it moves. The plot moves, and uh, everybody that has read it has had nothing but great things to um, say about it. So I want to thank everybody for supporting her and supporting the, uh, the podcast as well. I've been checking my stats for the past 30 days, and despite only doing this since uh, March, you know, my uh, listenership has been continuously um, moving in a uphill uh, direction. So I would like to thank everybody for listening. I've been posting some information, unsolicited advice, of course, and a couple of uh, Facebook groups that would be relevant to the show. More recently, I have been posting my Investing 101 episode that I did a couple of weeks ago and some Facebook groups for people that are interested in starting their portfolio. Everybody's strategy um, is going to vary. I can't stress that enough. Some people like the aggressive mix. Some people are a little more conservative. Some people like the slow and steady. And some people like to day trade and everything in between. So for me to sit here and tell you that there's a right and wrong way to do it, that's not really for me to say. Another big seller of mine is when I did my uh, planning for Disneyland episode, which uh, in my opinion turned out very well. I had a very cool guest come on who was a seasoned park goer. And she explained to the best of her ability the best ways to plan a uh, Disneyland trip. That's not to be confused with Disney World, which is in Florida. And I got a lot of positive feedback with that episode, but of course that doesn't go without the uh, negatives. Uh, There's one particular group, it was a Disneyland planning Facebook group that I had posted the episode on. And again, I, I don't like to force my shows upon anybody. I like to consider them as informative pieces. Shopping for an engagement ring, investing, what to look for in a DJ and planning for Disneyland. These are all pieces of information that people can take with them and use it at a, at a later point in time. The informative ones you guys seem to really like. But anyway, getting back to the uh, Disneyland um, planning Facebook group, I uh, posted the episode in there and I had a lot of likes and a lot of uh, hearts, whatever the hell that's called when people actually like the, the picture, whatever it is that they're seeing. And of course, there is the one or two people that will comment on it that claim to be the authoritative figure in uh, Disneyland, as in Disney is for them and for them only and everybody else is beneath them. So what the hell am I talking about? I posted the episode. So lo and behold, there's this one lady that chimes in and says, well, you know, you might want to check your stats on this, that, and the other thing. I forgot what she said. She goes, it's really uh, this. And then lady number two comes in. She's like, well, it sounds like that your guest has only been there 15 times. I've been there 15 times in a year. It's like, well, congratulations. You know, somebody doesn't have a life 15 times in a year. A lot of people don't even have the money to go once a year and she's boasting about going 15 times and then lastly lady number three comes in 
And she's all like, well, actually, um, the walk from the Who Gives a Shit to the uh, Small World ride is uh, three minutes and 47 seconds, um, not four minutes and uh, two seconds. So you might want to just double check that. And I'm like, sweetheart, this is a beginner episode. People that are looking to go here really don't give a shit about that extra 15 seconds. I understand that it's very trendy to want to correct people and to think that you're the... Um, authoritative figure and whatever the hell it is that you're talking about but let's get something straight here there are some things that I know that you don't and you don't see me going around correcting everybody and being condescending in the process so that's just a pet peeve of mine that everybody's on this mission to correct everybody especially when they're hiding behind the keyboard look everybody makes mistakes this show is not perfect nobody's perfect I'm certainly not and you probably aren't you know people make mistakes and that's just the way it is. This is a part of life. But uh, to be as so condescending as to boast about how many times you've been to a park, it's just, you know, I should have just told her to go fuck herself. But I don't play that game. I'm not going to lower myself to her level. I just said, you know, thank you very much for your reply. I will take it into consideration. And then that was it. I guess I kind of diffused it. So that's it. I said my piece. So I got a couple of pretty cool um, guests coming up for um, some upcoming shows on Victory Loves Company. I think you guys are going to um, enjoy it. There's one gentleman that I had interviewed uh, via Skype that I think I'm going to post on Monday. And Gina is just, uh, you know, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But it was uh, it was really cool. I got some really cool guests. I want to do a uh, Connie's Convos edition like once a month. I'm going to try to do it maybe like the last Thursday of the month where I can just kind of chat at you the way I'm doing now, and I can answer the uh, questions that you guys have been um, emailing in. Probably after the summer, I'm going to get back into posting two times a week. Keyword here is try, as I am in the busy season of my business right now, where we're climbing out of college graduation events, and now people are getting into elementary and high school events so my services are in very high demand to the point where I'm actually turning business down which I guess is a good thing but I uh, appreciate my sanity and my time much more than my money and of course there's the added bonus of sitting here talking to lovely people as opposed to schlepping heavy and expensive machinery up and down freight elevators and into uh, strangers parties but what are you gonna do you got to pay the bills somehow um, like I said, this is just a, a quickie episode. Um, I'll read a couple of the questions that you guys had um, emailed in. All right. Conrad, if you could choose one food that is no longer available that you would like to try, what would it be? Well, I tell you, I never actually tried a Crystal Pepsi before. I think that came out in the early 90s. I never I had the opportunity of... Um, of having that. Um, I do miss Doritos 3D. I'm not sure if anybody out there remembers those, but Doritos did offer a, um, they, look, they look like blowfish, really. And they were Doritos, but it looked like they had a big air pocket in it. And those were so much fun to uh, eat because when you used to put like one or two in your mouth, you would crush them with your tongue against the roof of your mouth and they were just so much fun to eat. But they used to tear the shit out of your mouth when you used to eat them, but I do miss it. Um, sitting on my sitting on my couch in my old house watching television and just chugging a half a bag of those things. They were absolutely delicious. Let me see a food that I haven't tr- that I haven't tried. I would say I would like to try a hamburger from McDonald's, like the original hamburger from McDonald's back in like the early nineteen fifties when they actually used fresh meat. I'm sure it probably tastes similar to an independent hamburger, like a in and out or a Five Guys, something along those lines. But um, just to say that I had the original McDonald's hamburger from like the 1950s, I think would be really cool. If I had to choose a beverage that I want to uh, try but never had the opportunity to, I would like to try the original 1886 version of Coca-Cola. Take away the fact that it was made from uh, coca leaves and it had traces of cocaine in it to take that out of it. I would still like to try it just to see what that tasted like, you know, over 130 something years ago. I think that would be really, really cool. And the fact that it's pretty much impossible 
to get a hold of that it makes me want to try it even more. So, um, yeah, that would be my vote. I would say the original Coca-Cola formula would still be cool nonetheless. All right, moving ahead here. Um, Conrad, you speak a lot about investing with stocks and other securities. I do. Any hot tips? Well, actually, I touched upon that earlier. Um, look, everybody's investment strategy is different. You know, I can sit here and say, oh, you, you definitely want to get into, you know, energy right now because energy and gasoline prices are on a rise. You can make the argument that uh, cannabis is going to be more mainstream in the United States and in Canada. So you might want to look into maybe a marijuana ETF. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody's different. Um, I could tell you what I personally have done is since gas was on the rise, I was picking more individual companies in the energy sector. I was looking at um, ExxonMobil, I was looking at BP, and I was looking at Royal Dutch uh, Shell. Effective, I guess last week, they were all at 52-week highs with the exception of Exxon. So I wanted to wait for the dip in order to uh, to make my purchase. Now, I think that dip came last Friday when gasoline went from like $72 a barrel to like $67 a barrel and then eventually $66 a barrel over the weekend. So that was a good opportunity to uh, purchase. But last week I did make a purchase for a smaller petroleum exploration company that's based out of California. I'm actually doing very well with it despite the fact I've only had it for about six days. So uh, that was me. Um, secondly, I do believe that the uh, marijuana industry, as volatile as it is, is only really going to go um, upwards. Don't smoke it. I'm not an advocate of it. If you do, God bless. If you don't, God bless. I am apathetic in that. But I believe if you do want to make money off of it, it might be something you might want to take a look into, especially some of these um, Canadian stocks where um, I guess they're a little more lax than the United States is. But Again, I only see the United States really becoming more and more accepting that the fact that this is the way it is. I know Washington, California, Southern Oregon, Colorado. I would not be surprised if Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey were going to be next because this is the land of liberal rule over here. And now that New Jersey has a, a blue representative, that it kind of really only opens the door for the industry to kind of explode over here. And if that happens, I would not be surprised. Again, if New York or Connecticut would follow suit as this is a very, very densely and highly populated area. So there's a lot, a lot of money around here and there's certainly no shortage of demand and I don't see supply as being an issue. So that's just me. On the whole, in the in the grand scheme of things, I love my I love my banks. I love my financial financial institutions. I picked up some more shares of uh, JP Morgan, and I picked up some more shares of BlackRock. Ticker symbol is BX, I believe. I consider that really more of like an income stock because the dividend is very, very high, and it's a very, very sluggish stock. I think it's 52-week high was somewhere in like the high 30s, and it's 52-week low was somewhere in the low 30s. So that's something that you hold on to and just collect dividends off of, or you can just situate it where you can reinvest the dividends back into it so it's it'll grow organically but i have been listening to the uh, wall street journal and numerous times they talked about how the feds are raising rates and as a direct result of that mortgage rates for home buyers are going up so banks are going to be making a little more money at the expense of us but again if you want to profit from it it's something you want to look at so again i can't stress enough that everybody's financial and investing strategy is different that's just my take but what the hell do i know okay uh lastly uh conrad big fan of the show um, i'm just curious you don't really mention your political stance on your show where do you typically lean um, well, yeah, there's a reason I don't like to get political on this show because number one, it's very trendy. And number two, I, I don't want to play people's games because there's nothing that I'm going to say that's going to change your mind. And there's probably nothing you're going to say to change my mind. But to get it out in the open, I am neither. I am not Republican or Democrat. I consider myself um, an independent. 
or cafeteria independent, if that's how you want to classify it as. I take a little bit of both sides and I formulate my, my own opinion. So I can't sit here and say, well, I definitely always vote red or I always vote blue or I side with this person or I side with that person. No, I think there are good people on both sides and I think there are bad people on both sides. And there are things that both sides do that I disagree with and there are some that I, uh, that I do agree with. I try to stay away from it. I know people get all riled up over it, but I feel that shitting on one side, you're kind of alienating a big segment of your audience. And so for that reason alone, I don't do it, number one. Number two, I really don't give a shit. I don't care what the hell is going on in you know, Kuwait or uh, you know, Mongolia or Russia or whatever. I mean, this shit does not affect my day to day. I really, I really don't care. I watch the news to see what happens with the market because that's important. But for the most part, I, I don't care if you know this person is taking a shit and we need to know about it. It just doesn't, it doesn't affect my day to day. Like I just, I don't, I don't care. But there are people that they get emotionally involved with it and they get so riled up to the point where you know you could see they're legitimately mad just telling the story. Again, that's why I tend to stay away from it. I'm not saying I'm not informed. I think it's important to stay informed, to go at a level that the other side is the devil and that your side is the holy grail, I think is um, is arrogant and ignorant wrapped up into one. So uh, there's a reason for that. So to answer your question, yeah, I'm a cafeteria Republican and I'm a cafeteria Democrat. And somewhere in the center lies my uh, personal beliefs. So I think I should do it for this episode. Like I said, I wanted to keep it brief. Um, if you do have any questions, keep them coming. My email is uh, thevictorypodcast at gmail.com. And as always, you can check us out on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at VLC Podcast. And I look forward to talking at you on Monday.